what we're doing, which is a little different than, say, creating a painting or a clay pot, is we're a welding, wielding <laughs> um, glass that's 2,000 degrees and it's very heavy on the end of a five foot pipe. And we're harnessing that energy and that hot molten media and making it respond to our will with our bare hands on the 2,000 degree surface. So more or less, we have to have our design ready to go. We have to have things planned out. We know seconds make a difference. And we're not only making the piece, we're counting, we're timing, we're listening for the pitch of the glass when we ding it. We're making choices at that moment, but we're also planning it out well before we begin. Mainly, it's a lot of um, careful action, as well as spontaneous choices within a set boundary. I think it's almost a poetic expression in uh, our glass. Instead of words, it's a feeling, but we're telling the story around the piece with our design. I say all of Midsummer Night's Dream is in our work because we do work abstract, then the viewer is allowed to participate in uh, the imagery as well, trying to discover what he or she thinks of it. If we do that, then we've done a good job. The boss man decided to put Levitt and Myron from 42 Designs on the project as well. They've been working on concepts all week. The Columbia Tower board meeting is at the end of the day, and if they like any of the concepts that they see, then, well, walk in the drops. Ever since the internet was first made public back in 1993, millions of people have used it to express creativity, communicate with others around the world, and stay linked through one united web. To this day, the internet remains to be the most convenient place to go for all of these reasons and more. However, while there are those that freely go about their business, many others try to take advantage of such benefits. Many attempt to exploit weaknesses against individuals, their information, even their own hardware through cyber attacks. As for why they do such questionable actions, they either do it for their own personal benefit, primarily money, pleasure, etc., or for unknown reasons that we can't deduce in this broad spectrum. Thankfully, with time, many companies have been able to create counters to such underhanded tactics, making antivirus softwares and VPNs so you have a lesser chance of encountering and fighting against things like this. In this video, I will give a brief overview and explain three specific criminal threats to a person's privacy. For our first topic, allow me to introduce and use an example from a popular YouTuber by the name of Kit Boga. Adam, you have to give the card number to me. Let me figure out how to redeem the Best Buy gift cards and maybe that'll help you. Madam, madam, not, madam, madam. Oh, God. You must be wondering why I decided to use such an odd example here. But don't be fooled by the anguish of the caller for his goal was to steal about $2,000 worth of Google Play gift cards. This was merely the aftermath of how well Kit Boga fooled the scammer into thinking he was someone else and spending such Google Play cards. That scammer is the perfect example of a direct thief, or somebody who was about to commit direct thievery. Someone who attempted to steal info or money from right under the victim's nose by interacting with them directly. In this case, they attempted a form of deception to make the victim panic and empathize and send codes like that his way. Chances are, you're wondering what I mean by indirect theft right after going through the last topic. Simply put, 
This is the theft of our data that is indirect from our devices and input through a middle ground per se. Hackers have the same access to websites such as Amazon, Facebook, and all, just like we do. So what they're able to do, once in a blue moon, is breach through the securities of sources like that and take the data that we've put into it as users, clients, and visitors. Our personal IPs of our devices for the taking already. Unfortunately, not every breacher is out for money, joy, or anything when they knock their systems through securities. Like Michael Caine said in The Dark Knight, they can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Though very rare, there are viruses and hackers whose sole goal is to destroy everything you have without question by bricking your computer, locking your input device from interacting with your computer, and even overloading CPU and hardware. These are, without a doubt, the most dangerous sets of threats to encounter, mainly due to the unpredictability of what could happen to your data and if it could even be salvaged from a third party. While most threats like this are difficult to be traced, a primary example here would be the Code Red computer virus outbreak back in 2001. According to the Code Institute, Code Red was a worm program that copied itself to other devices when opened and would simply deface websites and such with red text. While that doesn't seem all that bad, this match caused over $1 billion in damage when it overloaded servers, caused buffer errors, and disabled access to certain internet features. This seemed to open a lot of eyes in terms of the importance of security for many considering worms primarily rely on security features to access the infected system. Perhaps sometimes there doesn't need to be a justification for wrongdoing such as this, especially considering that the creator has never been caught to this day. The hardest thing about climbing is the physical aspect, I think. Um, I grew up playing soccer, and so I have, you know, this lower body strength and endurance. Um, but that's what I like about climbing is that it challenges me to work on my upper body strength. I, it's, it's humbling as an athlete because, um, you know, I have to try hard to be good. The challenge is, like, oh. almost all of the fun, uh, finding a route that you like can't do one day and I mean really, really can't do, like can't even get like two holds on it. And then a week later coming back and trying it again and being like, oh, okay, hold on, maybe I can get this hold. And then the week after that, just suddenly flying up it and being like, oh, who awesome, I, I just did that. I've been working on that for like two or three weeks and it's been great. And then of course they take it down the next day. So that's even better. It's being able to see the change in like my body and how how strong I'm getting, um, and it's you know a lot of it's not physical strength, it's mental strength too. So you can, you know, one day you're just not going to be in the right headspace to do something, and then you come back two days later, and it was as simple as that. Um, so a lot of it's just being you know being able to gear yourself into right headspace and just going from there and and then I mean also seeing a change in physically like being able to be like oh wow like that muscle wasn't there before but I know it's there now. So, there's these two guys. Wait, two guys? Yeah, there's these two guys, and they both want a sandwich. So wait, wait, how do they know they want a sandwich? What do you mean? Well, like, I mean, like, like what are they, psychic? You mean like they can read each other's minds? Like that kind of psychic? I don't think there's another kind of psychic. I, like, I, I, just, I just think it's important to set up the joke properly. I think timing is more important. And you're kind of ruining my timing. Okay, so 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 two guys and they both want a sandwich. 
Well, what kind of sandwich? What difference does it make? I mean, I just think that it'll make a difference with the thing. You don't even know the thing. I haven't gotten to the thing. Oh. J- j- ma'am? Like, j- he's trying to help? Okay. There's these two guys, and they want a sandwich. So they're walking down the Wait, street. Wait, they know each other? How do I know? What am I, psychic? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Look, do you guys want to hear the story or not? You? Me what? You want to hear the story? I mean, at this point, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I don't know. Where's he going? What am I, psychic? I just had the weirdest dream ever. I was in a warehouse and there was this guy, he was a maniac in this yellow suit and he had an axe and he was chasing me and it was like I just couldn't get away no matter what. Like every time I turned around he was just right there. And he had this axe and we went up these stairs and he was right there and as soon as I turned around he he just tried to get me (laughs) and then I woke up. Wow, that's awful. Yeah. That is so scary. <laughs> you need this more than I do. Thanks. You alright? You no. look shook. It was just like one of those dreams where it was just so real. 